Uh, welcome to our Core Eagle Giving Tuesday. Uh, I guess we're guests guests on live chat. <laughs> <laughs> you all know Amy Reese. I'm John Howe. Glad that you can be here with us today. It's Giving Tuesday, and uh, I guess I'll start out by just uh, uh, saying a big thank you to you all for your support. This is our we call it our last fundraising event of the year. Uh, we've had a, a great year of support from folks, uh, you know, just donating time, effort, talent, and everything to the Eagle Cams, our programs, um, our Falcon Banding program, monitoring, pretty much everything. So it's been it's been a great year, and it's been kind of nice uh, uh, being a little bit more free. Uh, now and uh, out banding on the walls uh, on the cliffs without having to have masks. <laughs> oh, yeah, this so, was uh, <clears throat> such a better, such a better year in terms of yeah, a lot of that than last year. Yeah, so, so definitely thankful for that. So uh, anyway, so uh, I guess first question that comes up uh, after uh, a big thanks to y'all uh, is how can you help us out? How can you donate? Um, yeah, uh, we've got our normal links. We've got a lot of folks who are already supporters. Uh, they do that through our PayPal links, uh, through our website, Facebook page. We also have donation uh, through Network for Good. And then there's the regular US mail, which works great. We get a lot of that too. So uh, those are three different ways that you can directly uh, donate to support our work. Um, there's also fun ways to uh, grab your um, I've got a, a Mississippi River Flyway camera mug here. We've got uh, T-shirts uh, um, with the Decor Eagles on here in D24 and D25, right? Uh, we got uh, a lot of other swag and stuff that Amy's got set up on the website. Uh, so uh, lots of different ways that you can support uh, the work work that we do. And, and we're going to have calendars coming out, so look for calendars. Right, John right. will have the director's yep. cut, and then Robin Brew yep. is also going to have a calendar. Yep. So. Robin's got hers out already. Ours are, should be out. Here's the cover for the 2022 Decor Eagles calendar, and I'm just going to tell you that uh, there's some pretty amazing photography in there. Uh, we've got a little bit of stuff uh, from, from Robin. We've got some stuff from Glenn and Darlene. Got some stuff from the cameras. So we got a nice mix uh, um, of uh, mom, DM2, and the young ones. So uh, anyway, and I think I you guys saw that, but I'm just going to show you. There is our cover. I don't know if I put it up here when I said I was doing it there. But uh, OK, back to. John and Amy. So we can start, I guess, by recapping the year. It was, as you guys all know, sort of a hard year to follow the Decorah Eagles since they decided to pick up for new digs. Um, thanks to Robin, especially, also to Scott Iverson, we were able to keep up with what was going on. So, right, right. It, it, at least because of our on the boots, our yeah. on the ground team, um, we know that. They laid three eggs. They produced three eaglets. Um, we yeah. had a flawless fledge. Thank you for to Sue and Benny for letting us know where. And yeah. three was because John, like this was a thing for me, and I don't know if it's a thing for you trying to find that other nest. Once yeah. we started to suspect right. it, I know you made several trips. I made at least three trips. Right. We looked and looked and looked and. Because they had built within 700 feet of that retaining uh, retaining pond, hatchery pond, for so long, it never even occurred to me that they would be yeah. uh, over a mile two, mile, two miles away. Right, right. And it, it was uh, it was kind of fun in a way to, uh, even though it was unfortunate that it was at a spot that we could not watch them close, um, it was kind of fun in a way to do the uh, whack-a-mole method to identify, okay, when they're hatchery or not over um, on the upper Iowa River and vice versa and just verifying that um, from afar it's we think we're good enough to identify that that's mom decora but it's uh, I mean that we need that extra verification that 
okay, this is really the eagle that we think it is. Um, now, John set up a hatchery team and an away team, and you guys had, what, phones and radios? And... Right, right, right. So, uh, and that's been pretty apparent um, when, as, as we've gone through the year and the season. So that, I guess, has been unfortunate. Um, part of that process was just the hope, uh, uh, you know, even December into January and February, uh, it looked like there was a possibility. You know, some sticks brought in under the nest, some roosting that was done right up on, on the skywalk or above. Um, it looked promising that they possibly might come back. Uh, um, and then it didn't happen. So um, that was our reality. Right? Yeah. So uh, there's, I guess, you know, probably one thing that I haven't talked a lot <clears throat> about is the possibility I probably off season here before the season might put up a uh, another camera on the other side of the maple tree so we don't have to look through branches to see mom and dm2 when they're they're perched so that that's a possibility coming up here in the next couple months um, for equipment and things like that so um, yeah getting into the year uh, um, that was the big news was the big move uh, and just looking at you know, what the history of the Decor Eagles has been, you know, when they've moved, how often, what that time period has been. And it actually, when we went and looked at it, it seems like it's been fairly regular that about every six, five, six, seven yep. years or yep. so, they've made a new nest and moved. Whether it was a tree coming down or whatever the reason being, uh, they seem, you know, that's what eagles are. They're yeah. nest builders. So, um, we have to look at that pretty much at all of our nests. That's why we have backup nests, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob, uh, Bob was a believer in that and, and drilled that into my head, our heads. It's like, uh, we gotta have, gotta have a backup and, and, uh, it, it sure has paid off, especially with, uh, us wanting to be able to continue the, the type of coverage with the Eagle life cycle that we can with the Decora North nest. Um, and Mr. North and, and DNF uh, north of Decora. So, uh, well, it's been a joy even just setting up a spotting scope and taking some video and taking some snapshots, digiscoping and doing things like that from afar um, with mom and DM2 at the N3 nest. So um, definitely uh, excited about what we can see there. And uh, uh, I guess, you know, time will tell about what's going to happen this year. Right. Um, it's looking like a little bit more attention around the hatchery, but kind of a little bit of the same as far as where are they going? They're not going over to that other place <laughs> right. again, are they? Come on. <laughs> I will say one thing that I thought was interesting. Um, like so at Decor North, one of the fun things was getting to see the lives of the eaglets after fledge really, really well. And yeah. with mom and DM two, the question was like, Hey, are they gonna bring the eaglets over? And it turns out no, I kinda feel like the hatchery was where they came to get away from their eaglets. So it was sort yeah. of fun to see that aspect right. of their lives post fledge. Right. And that that we we did learn. It's like, you know, when when they have their natal nest and they fledge from there, uh, that's that's where their training grounds are even after they fledge. So um, we we were wondering about that. It's like, are they going to drag them over, you know, to to feed them there, and and how far will the the, the, the young fledglings follow? We've got the history from tracking the the core eagles yep. and B35. shout out to Brett Vandernack. Yeah, yeah, Brett and crew. Um, so we know that from our transmitter work that they do stay pretty close, and then they start moving out. And then they're out of town. So that's probably what happened uh, this year with our young um, at the Decor and three nest. So, yeah. Uh, with that said, I guess uh, um, we do have some opportunities. Uh, we will see about some possibilities for showing a little bit closer zooms in and maybe some video of the Decor Eagles. Um, I won't talk too much about that because it's basically not a given a done deal yet but just uh there's public access places that uh, they can be viewed from and uh, um, we might try to 
use these cameras that we have. It's great technology to get some closer looks. Speaking of that, you know, we always talk about <laughs> cameras and stuff like that. So what are we doing right now? Um, we actually uh, um, have another solar powered system to put up on our new backup nest. And we haven't really uh, said much about that other than that we did cam up another eagle nest north of Decorah. Um, and really, it's part of the education program. We've got to have backup. Um, things are looking good for Decora North, uh, looking really good. And uh, <laughs> um, but we can never bank on that. I mean, we we've seen at Decora, we've seen at Decora North, we've seen other places that you never know what's going to happen. If no. it's going to be a infestation, uh, it's going to be eggs cracking. Or, May turn over. You know, some kind of predation on eggs or whatever happens. Uh, eagles are so hardy. We know that uh, from just what we've seen them handle, you know, the snowstorms and incubate through that. It's incredible what we see that uh, they're capable of doing in this climate. Um, so this time of year, we're testing cameras. We're still deploying some cameras and some equipment, uh, and we will be connected to that new uh, eagle nest and camera here in the next month or two. So, And I just wanted to bring something up really quick because one of the questions we've had a lot is, are you going to put a camera on M3? And I think it's important to understand that the tree really is, is buried at it. It would not be safe to climb it. So that's not an option for us. Uh, would we like to be able to do it? Sure we would, but it's just, I've climbed a dead tree once and I will never do that again. <laughs> Yeah, so, no. it, it is a safety risk that unless we're doing it with a helicopter or something like that, <gasps> uh, <What? laughs> or one of those new jets and uh, flying cars, uh, <laughs> no, they're, they're too expensive. Um, but uh, yeah, Amy's right. Uh, even if we could uh, get over there to do something, it isn't a dead tree, and, and we just can't take the safety chance of being up there and, and having the tree come down or part of it while while we were up there. So um, so we're testing cameras out. Uh, we've got uh, um, our test subjects here, our peregrine falcon that was a favorite <laughs> of Bob's um, that I've got that he gave to Laura and she's letting me have it on loan. Oh, that's adorable. Um, to test out focus capabilities, um, our eagle subjects here and our thrifty vulture. Uh, we've, got, we've got test subjects for for all of our cams that we test out in advance. Um, so, you know, a lot of you guys have heard a lot about this for folks that are new. Um, the, the camera season, putting them up, there's a lot of work that goes into bringing these streams. Yep. Uh, and anybody who's, who's uh, I'm sure the Explorer folks know that, we work with them and their masters at it all, all around the world and some pretty tight and tough places. Um, it takes a lot of effort to get cams powered to get backup cams, multiple cams, good audio, all that. So the donations that you guys make, and thank you so much for those uh, already through this year and, and probably what will come through before the end of the year. Um, that's what really helps us uh, keep these cameras and this program going. Um, we were talking about this uh, just uh, an hour ago about how far we've come along yeah. with the cameras. I could pull out the uh, the little microphones that are in a bubble juice container with a wad of foam and some of the cameras that uh, we used to have in the Eagle Nest uh, yep. in, in Bob days. And then uh, take a look at, uh, remember when we used to struggle with um, different radio stations coming up in the background on some of the microphones yep. once in a while. Um, we had time lags with the audio. We had pretty low quality audio comparatively. I mean, we'll take what we can get, right? Right, right. Um, especially when lightning strikes and things are, are involved with taking out equipment. But what we've got these days with multiple backup microphones now that are squirrel proof by putting a, a cage and wire around them, uh, um, we've got a system of audio and video that uh, we've learned a lot through the years and it's, it's high quality. It, it really is like you're up in the tree. Um, you will hear it again um, in a new movie that's coming out this coming year in 2022. New Core Eagles are going to be in a national movie about raptors. 
and you'll get to see a little bit of, of uh, the Decor Eagles and the Decor North Eagles. But um, where, how else could you get to hear an eagle making soft chirps while going through labor? Right, right. You know, and and uh, pushing out an egg. <laughs> Incredible advances in the audio and some of the stuff that that we've got. And like I said, uh, that's what we love to do. And so we're putting the donations that you give us for equipment and the paying of contractors and other people and paying for me and for Amy and others to actually do this work. So thank you so much for, for what you do and, and help us to do what we do, bringing this program out to everyone. And we did do some work at N2BNN1, just like fingers crossed, right? Like maybe they'll come back. So we did get right. up, we cleaned cameras. Um, and we built a starter nest at N1, which frankly, I was beyond thrilled to see mom in a couple. I was just like, no, I texted Kike immediately. I was like, yeah, dude, <laughs> she's in the nest. So, you know, right. again, we have no control over what, yeah. but it, it's, I know you guys are always thrilled to see him. And honestly, it's a thrill for us too. So, it is. um, whatever happens, John, as always has plans, uh, and we will keep you know, trying to let you know what's going on and, and doing yeah. our very best to follow them. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, it, it, it was worth a shot. Um, DM2 has never been over at that nest. You know, we, we know that the male has some say in options and where the eagles nest. So, um, ultimately, it's, it's uh, mom decora. Like Besides, Bob used to say, where, whoever lays the eggs, who, that's where the yeah, nest is. Whoever lays the egg. That uh, biological fact is going to leave it totally up to her. But uh, DM2, I think, uh, had, has, has had some influence on. We always saw him kind of move, flying over in that direction early. And, and we did see kind of a weird uh, year in 2020 with uh, the black flies and the sludge and early fallout of the eagle, eaglets out of the nest. Yeah, that was a strange And year. it was an early end to a parenting season for the eagles. We saw them spending a lot of time off to the east, um, over in that direction where N3 is on the upper Iowa River. Um, who knows what those kind of things contribute, but it looked like, you know, from what we saw, that they probably had been working on that nest for, for more than just, just the season last year. In uh, late 2020, 2021, it looked like they'd probably been working on that one for a while. So they can build an eagle nest pretty quick, but um, they had a short season and I, I just all the time that DM2 spent over there and mom chasing after him and going off that way um, when we did not see the eagles um, at end to be or by the hatchery, it looked like they were spending a significant amount of time. Right, there. right, right. So that's part of their territory. Um, and uh, it's certainly so. been interesting to see them run other eagles off the hatchery because the studies that were yeah. done indicate that eagles will nest. I, I think it's within a, a kilometer of one another. I have the territory is really good. So then, yeah. you know, when it was clear that they were going to be nesting in this new place, I thought, well, maybe another eagle couple will come in and feed right. them pretty good. But mom is like, nope, not ready to yeah. sell the old place yet. That, that uh, we'll talk about favorite videos and things, but actually that was probably one of my favorite uh, moments last year was when mom was in N2B and, and this, this other male came in. And it's like, huh, oh, I wonder how she's going to react to that. And uh, it looked like he was, you know, in a friendly mood. <laughs> hey. And uh, she's like, comes up towards him and just sticks her leg and her tail and just kind of kicked him out of the Yeah, nest. it's like the kickboxing <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, some pretty amazing sights there. So, um, well, we've been pretty inactive in, in uh, just we have enough cameras to put them on different positions. So we've done everything that we can to make sure that uh, we're not influencing that by uh, not moving the cameras and doing other things, right. even though um, they could not be more used to movement of the cameras and things. So we really believe that that's not, not the reason why they, they chose to, to uh, uh, Also, if they wanted solitude, why would they nest behind Walmart? Like, no offense to Walmart, but they did not right. pick a place that was <laughs> lonely right. and in yep. solitude. That's a that's very true. busy spot. Right. Right, exactly. So, but we did just so everybody knows that something you talked about that at DNN too. Like we're really, really careful about that when we do our camera installs. Yeah, 
we usually don't do much uh, on any new nest until the eagles are committed um, and they've laid an egg. So, uh, and then we test that measured amounts. And over the years, we've never really seen, they'll notice movement, they'll notice things, but they really do not look at the cameras as a threat. Um, and I know the camo jobs aren't you know, just all that good. <laughs> So you were talking about favorite moments. I think my favorite moment was when we learned that we had three bobbleheads. That was Robin was down there doing the boots on the ground, and it was like, yes! I was so happy because, yeah. you know, I, I really did. And John mentioned the whack-a-mole thing. I really did want to know, even if we couldn't watch them up close in the nest. And that, for me, was just so fun and so yeah. rewarding. Right. To... Yep. And so uh, with with Robin's calendar, others, uh, and and I've got some some good stuff uh, that uh, we'll be coming out with the calendar that we're putting together from Glenn and Darlene Miller. Um, just some more of the photographers out there that have helped us. Thank you so much to the ph photographers helping tell the story, continued story yeah. of what's going on. Um, it, uh, uh, some, some amazing footage there of, uh, let's see, 37, 38, and 39. Am I getting that right? Are you getting it right? Sorry, you guys. I'm, I have to cheat. It was 34, 35, and 36 the year <laughs> yep, before. Yep, 37, so I was... <laughs> 38, and 39. Um, I've got those chiseled in my brain because I love watching uh, what's going on with D36 and D, D27. So. Yeah, and we are, that's a good point. We are also still following uh, D36 and D27. So if you're interested in that, you know, we post about it on Facebook and you can also go to the Eagle Maps on our website, yeah. look them up right. or build your own map yeah. or whatever. Um, it's always fun to see what they're doing. Definitely. So um, like I said, I'm, I'm, look, I'm positive about some opportunities to get a little bit closer footage and some pictures of uh, the Eagles this year, no matter where they are. Um, uh, yeah. How can you do that? Um, well, <laughs> when you have a tripod and a mobile camera system that uh, operates on its own and it has its own windshield wiper and does uh, 40x magnification and 4K video, um, and you can uh, call this wherever you want that you have an internet connection, we can pretty much broadcast from anywhere. So might not give mom and DM2 quite as much privacy as they got last year. We'll see what happens. And I see a couple of you are asking questions. So uh, Mech1 asked about um, the odds that they return to N2B based on how often they change nests. That's a really good question. John had mentioned earlier that they seem to change nests anywhere between five to seven years, either because they feel like it, so like N1 to N2 and then N2B to N3, or because a tree falls down N1 to N0 to N1, and then, of course, N2 to N2B when we made right. a nest for them. And uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Mark Stallmaster, I think it was, didn't call an alternate nest abandoned until five years had passed. So he mm -hmm. obviously saw some of the same patterns in eagles. Right. So, right. you know, but what are the odds? I, I, I wish we could answer that question. I really do. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think there's a chance. We see them there. They're clearly checking it out. They still consider that yeah. territory theirs. But I can't give you the odds. Right. Yeah, what happens this year, I think, will will be uh, telling, you know, as far as what the pattern is going to be. Uh, they're just going to continue to build on and, and look at N3 as their productive nest and the rest as you know, feeding platforms and part of their territory and, and just not actively uh, be used for, for nesting or not. And this year, I think, is going to tell a lot. Yeah. What we I... see. I agree. And then Bus Stop, you wanted to know about the chance that the new nest was going to be going online. I'm going to defer that one to John. I will say that that is a solar power installation and it's a little bit more complicated than, you know, N1 or even N2B, which were just right there by electricity. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, uh, um, really, the, the nest is, is right now in the backup category. And we've got... Uh, uh, two uh, pairs of eagles that we're following right now. So um, I guess uh, it, it's also a lot to do with uh, the wishes of uh, the landowners too. So our plan is that uh, if we need it, back up for watching a nesting pair of eagles and something happens at the North Nest, 
um, and we need backup uh, where we don't have that kind of coverage to follow a pair of eagles that uh, that's that new nest would be tapped into for that type of coverage so that is the, the plan on one end and then the plan the possibilities on the other end is if everything works with the installation and the eagles do nest there uh, it's never a given you know we always uh, we know that there's lots of things that happen, moving nests, partner changes, lead poisoning, electrocution. Mm -hmm. It never is a given that we have an uh, eagle pair coming back to their nest tree. That's always a gift. So um, if, if they do come back on this new nest uh, and we have the capability to do a broadcast uh, um, and we need to, you know, we've got that option. So if we do it just because we can, um, that we are not to that point yet. Right. So, right. So that's where we are right now. Hope that made sense. <laughs> and tell us, I saw your comment on the on the mobile plat on the mobile camera. So John keeps telling me about this. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds cool, whatever. And then he shows it to me. I'm like, what? That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think it's really quite cool. Yeah. So um, thinking about using this right now just to get some nicer shots of Mom and DM2 and the N or the M. M2, Maple 2. Um, a lot of times we're looking through uh, the, uh, the trees or even just a ways away. Um, I can place this thing with the uh, consent of uh, the DNR folks there um, over by the raceway and probably get a pretty nice uh, zoom in quality picture and broadcast it, you know, right from this camera. So we can augment and do a little bit of Fun experimentation with the camera idea. on on site, and then there are public areas that we can discreetly uh, probably maybe zoom in and show a little bit better shots of where Mom and DM2 are. And we're uh, talking to folks about that right now to see um, if that's a possibility. So um, we'll see. But we got a few months before we get to the point of we do nesting, <laughs> and we're we're not gonna. Uh, really can't go out too far on the rope there until we know that we need to. <laughs> right, right. No, it, and it always goes faster than we think, too. You know, it's like, oh, Christmas is on the way? They're laying eggs already. Right. How did that happen? <laughs> right. Um, but it is pretty neat with the technology here. So um, we basically have a mobile uh, 4K camera. Um, we can broadcast uh, from wherever we take it that we've got... Uh, a hot spot and that can be a phone yep. with decent cellular coverage so it can be great spirit bluff it could be on the flyway it could be pretty much anywhere you know we want to a new eagle nest a new you know whatever nest we can take this camera and if we got coverage we've got battery power on this thing to run for 24 hours before the battery needs to be swapped out so just some cool technology and and we'll be putting it to use so in some one place or another. Right. And I guess we can keep talking a little bit, but if you guys have any questions or anything, I'm watching the chat feed, so ask away and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, and and definitely uh, um, want to at least mention this. Uh, um, we've been so lucky over the last several years, uh, Giggle Pop and, and others who have who've thought ahead and they've loved and been a part of what we do with the Eagle family here and the Raptor Resource Project uh, projects. We've got the Peregrine Falcon Monitoring Project. We've got the training education uh, program with Luther College, with the college students that trap and ban and release uh, uh, raptors every year. That's been expanding. Um, we've got lots of really, really productive education programs here that that are funded by the donations that you guys make. Um, and what I was talking about was most recently, one of our uh, very dear fans, Tor Tony Lorenz, yep. um, donated a very significant bequest uh, to the Raptor Resource Project. So um, something, to, something to think about, you know, if you love what we do and you've really enjoyed it and it's made a difference in your life and you want to uh, uh, think ahead and do some legacy planning and do that kind of thing. There are folks that are doing that out there and 
We are so thankful. Thank you for those who have done it. Um, uh, you know, and we can thank you after the fact uh, because many people who have done it uh, um, have done it as part of their legacy giving after they've they've passed on. So. Um, Thanks so much for all of your efforts and contributions, uh, our moderators and our volunteers and the folks that help bring these live cams out to you all. I mean, it, it really has been an amazing thing that started back after uh, American Eagle with Neil and Bob and putting the cameras in the tree. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, um, you know, taking that, that uh, amazing step of saying, we think that People would really like to see this what's so going on. Fun. Yeah. Amy, let's get that internet <laughs> part going and let's, <laughs> we'll get those cameras up in the tree. And and uh, with that going viral in 2011, really kind of changed the whole thing about live cams and, and nature cams, uh, especially eagle cams and raptor cams. So um, it's been over 10 years now. And um, thanks for helping us keep it going this long. And right on. We're, we're going strong. And we're in, uh, you know, reasonable growth mode right now. So uh, we're reaching out a little bit. We're improving and, and we're taking it where it looks like it needs to go. So, so we've got two questions. Uh, D27 and D36 built nests. Would you consider putting cameras on them? Uh, I, absolutely. We would consider absolutely. it. It yeah. would depend on where it was. So there would be a lot of factors in. But yes, if they built nests, we would completely consider that. One of the things that Brett really likes about this project is it's sort of unusual to be able to trap eagles knowing their nest of origin. So it really kind of sheds a light on their travels and also on the other eagles that he's right. tracking that he right. captures as subadults and adults. So we would completely right. consider that. Right. And then Smokey, you asked uh, about who writes the blogs. So I write them, John writes them, uh, Robin writes them. Sophia has participated, and if you haven't seen her blogs, you should check them out. It's on the uh, banning blind and on the birds that, that we ban in the banning blind. So sort of a little bit from all of us. Um, but Amy's the, the master blogger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I do, write, I, do write, uh, I do write a lot of the blogs. Yeah, so, but it's a group effort, and I think one of the things I like about it is we all come at this from a little bit different perspectives. Yeah. Right. So it's sort of fun to get everybody's voice and uh, opinions and research and knowledge into the mix. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I forget, too, I just want to mention that, um, you know, we do have, uh, we've grown since the, the early days, and we've got about a $300,000 annual budget. We get a significant, and thank you to Explore Annenberg, we get a significant uh, uh, grant from Explore each year. Um, these other larger ones that come in, some some uh, larger donors, uh, and then, you know, everyday giving from many, many other people. Uh, power in numbers, right? Right. Um, so uh, thanks for that. But um, it allows us to do some projects like uh, we mentioned just a little bit about this at After the Fledge, but we've actually are working on a tracking program right now for with wintering golden eagles. So um, visualize this because our uh, board member and uh, uh, also uh, um, Raptor Resource Project employee Jeff uh, Jeff uh, Worrell. Worrell is uh, has had this vision of again trapping golden eagles that are wintering and putting a transmitter on and we'll be if we're successful we'll be tracking some golden eagles finding out where they nest and possibly be working towards a golden eagle. Uh, live cam so yeah so we're pretty and, excited and that's learning it's learning it's research it's uh it's uh expanding um into an area that uh there's a lot to be learned about about golden eagles i i, I realize that every time i talk to jeff and, and some others that are are much more expert about them than i am so i'm i'm definitely excited to learn to yeah see how that absolutely goes. so wish us luck with that but that's just the, one other thing that's going on behind the scenes that we can do and we are doing because of, uh, of the support that we get from you all. Uh, so uh, we mentioned the calendar, we mentioned uh, just straight out donations. How, that's how you can help us um, continue uh, taking advantage of it, uh, you know, connecting with nature, watching the eagles. Uh, we've got some 
folks who have done that in the past. Uh, I brought these out because I want to at least talk about them. Um, we've got a lot of great artwork and things. Here's uh, John Wildey's uh, rendering of uh, Dad Decora and Mom Decora on the Y Branch with the barn in the background. Bob had this uh, commission by John. Um, if anyone is interested in these, let us know. We'll let you know how you can you can uh, uh, donate to get one of them. Um, even recently, we've had some local artists. Amazing work. There's Norma Longsness uh, um, actually took uh, some of uh, David Lynch's photography and painted uh, Mom and Mrs. Mom and PM2, right? I believe. Not embarrassed if I can't remember. Yeah. And here's another one. These are beautiful pieces, but uh, look at what the Decor Eagles inspire. It's I'm just am amazed every day. We were thinking about the possibility of but talking a little bit about some of the, the notes that we get from people that uh, the Eagle cams have uh, improved their lives and, and how it's affected their lives and things. And I don't know that we have a whole lot of time to do that right now, but I just wanted to mention that we hear and get a lot of testimonials from folks that uh, that enjoy and and uh, really improves the lives of folks that are watching and connecting with the, the bald eagles and these raptor cams. Yeah, well, I think we've got to get going, but um, I guess I'm just going to say thank you so much for being here today. This is this was we weren't sure. I'm going to be completely honest with you. We weren't really sure how this was going to go, and I really, really think it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I, I'll say a goodbye and and thank you so much. It, it really, uh, we love doing what we're doing, and we couldn't do it without you.